Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Ray Summit 2024. So let's talk about the future of AI. The future of AI is a sovereign super intelligence. What do I mean by sovereign? It's an AI that can generate its own income, can pay for its own compute, and follows the directives of a decentralized autonomous organization. I'm Heather Kahn, I'm VP of Engineering at O, and I'm joined by my colleague, Zach, who's head of AI ML Ops at O. And together we're here to show you the path towards super intelligence and what we've created at O. So let's talk about our mission. Our mission is simple, but it's really ambitious. It's to develop and deploy the world's first sovereign super intelligence. We're building the foundation for that super intelligence. And today I'll talk about the building blocks. But first, what are the challenges in the current industry? Accuracy. Large language models are prone to hallucinations and bias. Speed. These models have hundreds of billions of parameters, up to trillions. It takes a fair amount of time to run inference on these models. Cost. It takes thousands of GPUs and days to months to train these models. And usually in a commercial setting, you have to pick two out of three factors. We've created O Routing Intelligence, ORI, and we aim to address these three challenges for the industry. I want to bring on board Zach. He'll be talking you through the technical details, and then I'll circle back. Yeah, thanks, Heather. Um, so I'm going to take off the technical part of the talk. Um, so just want to introduce in ORI, which is O Route Intelligence. And so we have a couple kind of core uh, features we are going to uh, walk you through and in terms of what, how we're going to build this um, uh, architecture of the software. And so first, uh, we've been thinking about a more intelligent way like to uh, handle the query routing um, for the AI models. And the second is the multi-agent flow, um, because we kind of have been observing uh, the current, I mean, a lot of people are doing the, the same thing right now, but how are we going to uh, do this differently? And third is the inference awareness, which is uh, it's a unique layer we're going to put on top of our system uh, in terms of how we handle different requ uh, requirement of the inference in, in, ter in terms of the cost, uh, inference speed, token per second, uh, context length, and um, security as well. And uh, because we request a lot of kind of stuff going to our system to support to make this routing intelligence work, and uh, we need to kind of redefine the AI infrastructure a bit more, which I'm going to walk you through some details uh, later. Um, so this is pretty much our core feature at, at the moment. Um, first, uh, similar to chain of thought, uh, which is everyone's doing this now, and as we got to break down the query, uh, so something we called uh, query decomposition or chain of um, atomic queries. And so this type of query is a smaller user query. And it's uh, similar to chain of thought, but I'm going to show you a, a diagram uh, later on. And then the benchmark matching engine. And this is how we want to manage um, our uh, routing intelligence. We can route it to the benchmark. Uh, the top model from our uh, open source LEM um, benchmark from Hugging Face. And the third is the model agent routing. Um, so just know that we don't, not only doing like agent to agent routing, but we also do model to agent, model to model, uh, agent to model as well. And, uh, and then the last layer is also pretty important and critical. It's for our evaluation and ethical assessment. 
um, because we want to build our system. Uh, so our, the response is our AI to give people uh, will be uh, responsibly. So this is first is a query decomposition, uh, what we are thinking to do. Uh, similar to channel thought again, um, but the, the bottleneck of channel thought is normally you would do this uh, sequentially, which means you, you use the same model um, to, to ask, so the model will ask itself and to just repeat this uh, question like uh, chain of thought like on chain. Uh, what we're doing here is a bit different, but we use, uh, have the expert LM to break down each query into a smaller piece. And then for each question, we use a different model to answer those questions. And then this some, some of the query can be done in parallel. So it's more like a partial sequential, partial parallel kind of a process going on here. And um, yeah, so like I said before, it's a, we have the expert model to handle that and then to uh, design the whole um, uh, chain of uh, atomic query. And then uh, each layer we have, we so the first layer we're going to enforce uh, some ethical filter. So if any question is not aligned with our ethical um, um, alignment, and then it won't be answered, for example. And then the, uh, so you can see like each, I don't know if the text is big enough for you to see, but for each query, uh, tr tr traditionally you have the single LM to handle everything. But in our version is we want to route it, this uh, smaller query to the best model to answer that. And so those best model has, it will be defined by uh, the open LAM uh, benchmark. So we pretty much uh, categorize some task and then we route it to the right, uh, the top model in that benchmark and to answer the question. So which I, we're gonna just show you some example. And for, so another thing I would try to do this differently is the evaluation layer. Uh, so for each query, we have the response and then we need to go through a series of kind of uh, evaluation layer and then we will ensure that it will have the best quality of the output for each model. And then not only that, if the first round, uh, it didn't give a high quality enough uh, response to the user, and then we're gonna have to rerun it. So it's an iteration for each smaller query. And then so this way we can ensure every single kind of um, response for the smaller query, and it can be answered, it can provide the best quality of the responses. And then because, so this kind of address the current challenges uh, of the, uh, the agent system because it's really hard to control the quality of each um, response because um, it's, not, it's a non-deterministic process. So this way we want to turn the non-deterministic process into de deterministic, which we can ensure the quality. And this is our benchmark uh, matching engine, uh, which you can see we, have um, a little kind of the table here. And then once you got a query and then we have the matching model to route it to the right, uh, uh, the LM to answer the question. And in this case, like we have a 30, 32B model here. Uh, but what we doing kind of behind the scene is we have the benchmark registry, which we list all the benchmark, uh, current kind of um, popular benchmark in our database. And then for each model, we know that, uh, I mean, for each benchmark, for example, BBH, uh, you got a pretty good code generation uh, benchmark. And then if you ask the uh, code generation question, and we know, uh, for example, Colama 34B, assume it's the best model on the leaderboard right now, and we're gonna have to route the, that question to this Lama, Colama 34B model to answer that question. So it just really depends on what you, well, what's your, uh, the, the question you ask, and then we um, um, classify them into a different uh, task category, and then from the task category, we match the right benchmark, and from the benchmark, we pick the best performing model. And we want to do this in a way like in real time, uh, because as you all know, uh, Hugging Face open LM leaderboard, uh, you, it, the leaderboard will be updated maybe every other hour because people try to compete and to uh, use the open source model to just to get the highest rank uh, in the benchmark. So we want to capture that in real time. And so in our uh, backend infrastructure system, and so we set up um, in, in a way, and it can be um, pretty much uh, detect if there's a new changes in a benchmark, and we update uh, our uh, backend um, LM inference endpoint. So we will ensure that all the uh, top, top five models in the benchmark, it will be 
available for our routing intelligence to, to work. And this is kind of uniqueness of what we do here is also it's called inference awareness. So user can define uh, what kind of uh, requirement um, that they have in terms of the inference. Maybe they are thinking about to save the cost so we can route them to a cheaper model to answer that question. If they prefer the, uh, the faster inference and then we, because we have all the uh, data like being updated real time in our uh, database. So we just, yeah, route it um, based on user's requirement. So our system can be flexible as well. And so something unique uh, in this approach is we also kind of consider the security compliance. Um, so if you request uh, the, the model responses you want to generate by the infrastructure complying with your uh, security requirements, such as SAX2 or HIPAA, and then we, because we have all this metadata, and then so we know, okay, so this model endpoint is coming from this infrastructure like has this uh, security compliance. So this model would meet users' requirements, so we're going to route the model through that as well. Um, and then this, uh, another kind of our thought around the engendic uh, workflow is in our kind of our mind, uh, we've been thinking about this is a multi-agent collaboration, right? Uh, but it's not kind of, we don't want to narrow it down only to the LM, but eventually we want to have the LM agent. Uh, it will have access to all the open source model, uh, classical ML model, uh, neural network model, um, computer vision, NLP, uh, time series model, so anything. Um, so we want to have the agent has the capability to actually find to a, a trend uh, a ML model to perform, maybe make some prediction. So that's our kind of end goal is to have this dynamic system. You have the agent perform some um, ML model prediction on behalf of the ML engineer. And so this could be more powerful in a way. It's not only uh, focus on the LM, but will be um, every kind of ML model and also any kind of data processing. And the agent will be able to use different tool or the API, uh, like do uh, function calling and uh, everything, yeah. Um, because this is a Ray conference, uh, we're gonna to talk a little bit about how we set up our infrastructure. Um, so right now we've been uh, in collaboration with io.net to uh, utilize their Ray cluster in, in our infrastructure. And so we have a couple H100 uh, clusters and to serve our LM, like so we use Ray serve plus VLM to serve all our LM's um, inference for the routing intelligence system. And for the inference uh, registry, like, yeah, we, we use the, yeah, we use the ben benchmark matching engine to handle that. And then we use Ray data uh, because we do uh, fine tune our model. So we, Eventually, we're going to fine tune only fine tune the most routed model, and so that uh, fine tuned model can also serve that purpose. Yeah, so have right data and right trend just to use a different technique uh, to do our fine tuning. Yeah, so this is current. We only have a really simple infrastructure at the moment, um, but we're going to develop a lot of kind of ML ops there within that, and then so we can um, uh, automatically kind of. Um, um, uh, provide the, the inference endpoint update and to update our uh, inference registry benchmark uh, database as well. So while we are developing this system, we actually have some unique insight we want to share. Uh, so the ORI approach, yeah, we want to, we aim to solve the multi-agent bottleneck uh, in a way like we have unique awareness in cost, um, security, uh, latency as well. And um, so one of the advantage we want to address, I think Heather would mention this later, is we, because you, you can see the bottleneck is the inference speed. Uh, the inference is not fast enough for you to collaborate, uh, the, for the multi-agent collaboration, because this agent need to wait a long time for another agent to, to perform the, the same thing, I mean, the, the, uh, another task. So the, way, uh, the agent right now is kind of waiting for each other. So the inference is the bottleneck. Um, and then uh, we're going to announce kind of our work, uh, collaboration. So we, how we can get a really high speed uh, inference, uh, maybe 10, 20 times faster um, inference. And so our uh, end goal, like uh, for this routing intelligence uh, in our vision, it's more like a new operating system. Pretty much that routing intelligence control everything in your 
system and can perform on your behalf. I know it's uh, still a bit of a road uh, ahead. I think we need to achieve this. But yeah, this is our vision, and we aim to, to build this in, within our engineering organization. Um, so here, I'm going to show you maybe some initial results of our benchmark uh, matching engine. And um, so we only use open source model here. So I know uh, some um, competitor in the market right now, uh, we, they doing sim something similar to do the routing um, mechanism. Um, but a lot of people kind of compare to you. They use some of the closed source model and try to beat the, the benchmark. But we all use um, open source here. And so we have a couple, uh, complete couple kind of evaluation for different benchmark. For example, MMLU, uh, MUSR, uh, ARC, all those kind of benchmark, our LRI will be able to outperform a single uh, 70B model. And because we route each question uh, to different model to answer that. And we also have a small demo that, to, that we can show you real quick. Um, so this is just still work in progress. We still building out the system, but just in this uh, short demo, just want to show you um, uh, how kind of each question will be answered by a different model, like it can save the cost um, and, and so forth. Yeah, let me see if we can make this work. Okay, so let me refresh. And then I prepare some question. I just don't want to waste your time because my typing f with the code might be faster than I type in English. So I just copy the question I prepared and <laughs> paste here so I can show you uh, the how this work. And then, yeah, depending on the internet, I think internet speed here is fine. The, so right now I ask a code coding question and it's supposed to route me to a uh, Kawama and to answer this question. You can see like uh, we have the the answer speed out uh, to help me, I mean to write this Python script. So you can see in the end it should show you it's answered by this. I can't really see here, but Kolama, right? And then we can try another kind of query and to see to show you. Uh, so this question is more. Oops for the creative writing. And then, yeah, it just, um, for some, something will happen next month. But I just want to see if this work. And then this, because this is a creative writing, so it's not supposed to route you to like Kolama to answer the question. So actually it get to another model to answer the question. Yeah, I believe this model rank pretty high in the, uh, the content generation category. And then we have another one, uh, maybe the entity extraction. So, oops, this is the entity the extraction question. Okay, I think it extract the entity right, and this is using another open source model, which I'm not able to see here. It's too small for me to see from the stage. Yeah, maybe the last one, just do that for fun. Uh, this is the fact checked question. Just refresh just in case. Yeah, I think it answered this all right and with another uh, top rank model in the benchmark. Um, right, so the, the purpose of to showing this demo is we still like work in progress, but um, we have we will have some uh, MVP release pretty soon in a few weeks, and then we will announce soon from our website. Um, yeah, so we uh, just want to open this up for people to try out as well. Okay. All right. Yeah, thank you, Zach, for, for doing the demo. Uh, it's amazing what the team has accomplished in just a matter of a few months. Uh, so I want to really thank the AI team and our research team at O uh, for putting this together. So let's talk about partnerships uh, next. Uh, Cerebris. If you guys are familiar with Cerebris, they're the world's first company 
that's built a wafer scale engine chip. It's a 10 inch by 10 inch massive behemoth of a chip. And what you can do with it is you can run large language models, massive models, at reduced, dramatically reduced inference and training time. We're talking days of months of training reduced to days. And we're poised to become potentially one of their largest customers. Secondly, IO.NET. IO.NET is a massive decentralized GPU compute platform. They have global, they have clusters distributed across the globe. And we want our team of distributed remote engineers to experiment and train on different model architectures at dramatically reduced cost and latency. So how can you guys help? We're not a normal AI company. We don't want to silo everything into a single corporation. We want it decentralized. We want it autonomous. And we need your help. So this is a call to action. Visit o.xyz. If you're a developer and you want to contribute to open source, take a look at o.xyz. Contact us if you're an entrepreneur or an investor. Get in touch with us. And if you've got any more questions, I'll be around Ray Conference, so just feel free to come up to me, ask me any questions. I'm uh, happy to answer. Thank you, guys.